what is WatchGuard Cloud specifically? WatchGuard Cloud allows you to manage and report on your security from one platform. Whether you want to reduce or eliminate infrastructure costs, accelerate your setup, deploy remote site, scale, simplify management tools, or gain greater visibility, WatchGuard Cloud can help. So some key facts. These are ones I wrote myself. WatchGuard Cloud is fast. It's much faster than running Dimension on site. So WatchGuard Cloud is, is similar to Dimension on site, but better. And we'll show how. But it's significantly faster. So you're going to love that. It uses the AWS Elasticsearch as an example. WatchGuard Cloud can be run in conjunction with, at the same time, as Dimensions. So this is not a uh, uh, this or that. It's a this and that. And I'd expect most people to use both. 30-day um, retention in the cloud is free. You can have longer retention on site using your own storage for free. Maybe you blend it. Use the cloud for rapid instant response type things. And use your on-site logging for historical data. WatchGuard Cloud has advanced alerting. You're going to see that. WatchGuard Cloud is included in your uh, security subscription. There's no fee for it. WatchGuard Cloud is encrypted. Uh, it uses TLS via AWS's IoT network. And WatchGuard Cloud reporting in the cloud retains one month of data, no charge. If you want to go beyond a month, you can buy storage in one month increments in the cloud. Um, this is a compromise. You know, WatchGuard's giving us WatchGuard Cloud for free. They're paying for AWS for us. They're paying for 30 days of storage for us. They're just saying, hey, if you want to go beyond that in the cloud, storage is expensive. Let's, you know, share that pain. So um, you can buy it in one month increments in the cloud. Also, WatchGuard Cloud can cover an unlimited number of appliances. If you've got a large distributed enterprise and you've got 25, 30 firewalls, every single one of them can be in WatchGuard Cloud administered in a single pane of glass and each of them gets 30 days of retention. So much easier than trying to spin up Dimension, VPN back, where you're going to put your storage, et cetera, et cetera. So WatchGuard Cloud is great. Lastly, it's evolving. Um, the the head honchos at WatchGuard sent me you know, information recently under non-disclosure about some of the things that are coming very, very soon. I uh, wanted to share them all with you, but because we're recording this webinar and posting on YouTube, they felt that wasn't a good idea because it's not publicly available info. But I will tell you, expect uh, uh, things like enhanced capabilities for configuration management, enhanced capabilities for change management, and so on. And it's all coming very, very soon, so be on the lookout for that. Now, comparing the two, let's compare uh, Dimension on-premise versus WatchGuard Cloud and let you see what the two differences are. So WatchGuard Cloud in this column here, right? And then the other column is if you have Dimension on-premise. You're probably familiar with this one already, right? So I'm going to walk you through what these things are and kind of briefly touch on you know, the benefits of them, and then we'll show them to you. Um, you get a laser pointer. These are the basics. I'm going to jump to the log search rate. Uh, the log search in the cloud is way faster, so you're going to love that elastic, uh, that faster search. Reporting and running reports is amazing. If you're the kind of person who wants to get a daily, weekly, or monthly report or do HIPAA or PCI compliance reporting, I'm telling you right now, just do the cloud because it's lickety split. I mean, it's amazingly fast, way better than using dimensions. It's cloud hosted, so no hardware, no VMware resources, and so on. Um, auto scaling, as you add appliances, it just grows up. Dimensions, of course, is a different story. Better and more advanced alerting included. Dropping down here to the bottom, this is a cool one I'm going to show you. Search engine reporting, which is nice. You can see if people are using popular search engines, you know, Google, Bing, et cetera, what they're actually typing in the search bar. And a nice high-level view of statistics, uh, as well as we always uh, segregate and separate that customer data. So just remember, this is not either or. You can have and do both. You can use Dimension on site and keep it, and you can use the cloud. I'm expecting that many of you will do both, and the reason is, again, logging. You're going to want maybe 30 days in the cloud for your reporting, for your monthlies, weeklies, dailies. It's super quick. It doesn't consume space. It works better. Then for longer term stuff, maybe you keep it in, in dimensions. The also, maybe on the smaller side, if you've only got a single firewall and you're a small business, 
maybe you might go straight cloud because you don't want to use VMware resources and pay for that and manage an on-site system. So, um, common question, what about security? Who can access this? Let's say you've got a security team that's got multiple people. WatchGuard Cloud has multiple access levels for administrators. So starting with observer, you can configure someone as an observer and they can see or view inventory management. They can view uh, services and they can view operators. You can't change anything. Next level up, analyst. An analyst has the ability to do anything under inventory management or services, but can't add or delete operators. And then an admin is a full admin. They have full control of adding or deleting operators plus uh, services and management. So it is not terribly granular, but you do have uh, three levels that basically map to what most people would need. So now we're going to get into the WatchGuard Cloud demo. So again, thank you for joining us today for a WatchGuard Cloud demo. Uh, the agenda for the WatchGuard Cloud demo, we're going to go over firewall dashboards and monitoring, compliance monitoring and reporting, the search engine search, scheduled reporting, and a whole lot more. I'm going to go ahead and pull up uh, my WatchGuard Cloud login. Put it on the other screen one second so uh, you guys cannot see my login info. I'm going to do a multi-factor push here. And now I'll drag it back over. All right. So I'm logged in to WatchGuard Cloud. There is a home screen. The home screen looks like this. Uh, it's not terribly informative. It's got some information. The one thing I like about it, because we're using AuthPoint, which is multi-factor authentication, I can see both firewall data and AuthPoint data on the same screen. That's kind of nice. And these are all clickable items, right? I can just click this and it drills in. That's kind of nice. But in general, you're going to spend most of your time under this one, monitor fireboxes. If you have lots of firewalls, okay, you're going to be able to do this at the root level of your company, and you can see all these uh, uh, data elements across all firewalls. Now, we're using a fire cluster at Vertex, which is two firewalls for redundancy and so on. Uh, so that lists it as a single firewall. I'm going to go here because you get a little more uh, data. So this is the monitor system. In the device summary screen, I'm going to kind of walk you through that. It shows your member statistics, what's going on. It, it lets you know botnet detection is working. Um, for today, which is this drop down, this is your date. It works across all of your reports and views. Today, yesterday, last 24, 7, 14 month, and so on. Customize it. You can change it to whatever period you want. I'm just going to leave it on today for now as we pop around because that's super fast. But just today, 499 botnets blocked, 122 uh, items blocked via web blocker, six IPS uh, blocked today, no malware, thankfully, 55 authenticated users, and then it shows kind of our most active policies. Very cool. Uh, logs, we're going to come back to these in a minute, but you've got a log manager and a log search function. If you are uh, uh, a hardcore firewall user and use WatchGuard for a while, you'll kind of know exactly what this looks like. It, it's, it's very similar to the big black screen that shows all your traffic, the traffic monitor, but now it's a log monitor, okay? I want to start with dashboards. Uh, dashboards are great ways for you to get a quick overview of what's going on with your firewall, and we've got several of them, an executive dashboard, security, subscriptions, threat map, firewatch, and policy. I'm going to start with uh, executive and go on to the rest. So on the executive dashboard, and again, remember, you can change the filter settings. I'll maybe go to 24 hours. See how quick that updates? Very quick. So in the 24-hour view, who are my top clients, top URL categories, top domains, destinations, applications, protocols, and categories? Now, this is the Vertex internal firewall. One thing you notice here, one of the top applications is YouTube, 16 gig. You know, a lot of people might think we're goofing off. Uh, that is a, a Roku video streamer. We have a subscription to YouTube TV. We have it in the uh, break room. So in our break room, we got a TV on the wall. 
It's streaming YouTube TV. So that's always kind of one of our top destinations. Very rarely are our team members using YouTube, but sometimes they do, but rarely. That's mostly our Roku. So that's an executive dashboard. It shows you uh, all the things you'd expect from an executive level. Very nice. The security dashboard, again, see how fast that loads? Super quick. And the security uh, uh, dashboard, we've got topped blocked countries, botnet sites, the top ones that are blocked, clients that have been blocked, destinations, URL categories, applications, protocols, and app categories. I want to focus for a second on this, top blocked URL categories. So we're using Web Blocker to block potentially unwanted software. We had 263 blocks in the last 24 hours. That's a clickable link, and it will show me clients, what protocols they were blocked on, and what destinations. What's interesting here is you'll see we're also blocking HTTPS because at Vertex, we have HTTPS content inspection enabled, even for Web Blocker. So I'm going to clear that filter and go back to the main security report. But that drill down function is available. Everything is clickable. It's very, very slick. So if I go back up here and I say, OK, what's a parked domain? You know, somebody registers a parked domain. Uh, uh, it's not real content. You want to know well, why is it blocked? The reason is it could be suspicious. I can click on that. And I see a question just popped in. Um, what about displaying long connections? Scott, I'll definitely get to that. So when I went to Park Domain, you can see uh, Tange, who's our finance manager, had 103 blocks for a Park Domain. She was probably trying to visit something that was she thought legit or at a link maybe. And here's the one that she was, or some of the ones that they were going to. So that's very cool. Um, Security dashboard. On the security dashboard, you get a graphical view uh, by time of all these elements, blocked websites, IPS, botnet, uh, reputation defense, and so on. One thing I like about this one is click to zoom. So here at the top, remember we're in a 24 hour mode, right? That's where we're at. Let me change this to custom and go back three days. So let's start and do Monday to today, hit save, and look how quick that updates. It's like super fast. Now, under IPS, I can see 368.2 million scanned, 136 intrusions prevented, right? But I can go in here and click to zoom and zoom in on it and hover and get the data from that exact minute. So 129 at at 1300, I can see what's going on. I want to look at blocks. I can see there was four intrusions prevented and detected at uh, uh, 6 p.m. there. Now double click, I zoom back out again. That behavior is the same across basically all the charts. Click to zoom, hover, double click to go out. So all I'm doing is putting the mouse pointer in here, click and drag. That sets my zoom window. I can hover, it has my time, date, and the data elements, and I double click to get out. Same on botnets, you see we had a weird one here, uh, a source IP blocked, right? I can zoom in on that, zoom in again, and just see that, 428 source IPs blocked at uh, 9 a.m. this morning from botnet detection. So. The firewall is working. <laughs> it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. The same with reputation enabled defense. Uh, threat map. You probably have seen this before. Uh, uh, a threat map tells us by geography um, where denied packets are coming from. I can look at blocked botnet site geographic locations. As you can see, it's mostly, you know, Russia. That's the primary one. Um, I can click on the IPS service for intrusion prevention. This one's mostly US because most IPS uh, events are coming from the US. Web traffic, I can click on that and it will show me graphically. Uh, this is taking longer obviously because we have a lot of web traffic over the last three days and it's gonna show a graphical map by density uh, across the world. So give that a minute to load. 
but that's going to show that web traffic in color coded fashion, you know, all over the planet. Probably should have set that down to uh, one day. So highest density is US, some Canada, some Europe, and so on. Uh, I go down to uh, today and I go to Firewatch. Now, Firewatch is something you've probably seen if you've ever looked at Dimension. Um, Firewatch is uh, a graphical tool where each one of these blocks is sized based on how much of it is used. So this is the Roku TV player. Today it's downloaded uh, four gigs of data that's streaming video since 7.30 this morning. And then you can see the next highest is John Duran. He's one of our remote support team members. I can filter on John Duran's activity. When I click that, it's going to show me his predominant usage is IT Boost. Now, that's the system we use for document management. So John has been in IT Boost looking at, you know, uh, network documentation of our clients, looking at system configuration data, and so on. It's a cloud-hosted, secure, encrypted service. We use multi-factor authentication to get to it, so information is protected. That's a good use of his time. So getting back to kind of long connections, to Scott's point, this really shows you what they're doing, right? That's kind of the long connections. If I go back down to application, now remember, I'm still filtering on John Duran here. That's my filter, and I'm looking at his applications for today. I can see web file transfer number one, uh, Google Chrome, Office, other stuff. Web audit for John Duran again by category. Number one, information technology. That's what you'd expect, right? Uh, he, we're IT people. He's doing most of his stuff in information technology, some in web analytics, some in dynamic content, some in business and economy content delivery networks, search engines, and so on. As I hover over these, it all changes. Go back here, you'll see one that said social web LinkedIn, right? I can click on that, change my filter, and now it's showing me the entire company filtered on social web LinkedIn. Who is there, how much time are they spending, and so on. So Derek Simon, he's one of our account executives, he's spent time on LinkedIn today. Probably not that much, honestly, but it's a bigger block because it's a percentage kind of map. Uh, Derek is on LinkedIn, probably looking at information about clients, what's been going on with them, what's going on with you know people in his network and so on. I was on LinkedIn this morning just for a minute to check my inbox. I had some invites from some people uh, and so on. Then you can see everybody else that's been there. So I'm going to clear this filter and go back to unfilter. This is all logs uh, again in Firewatch. Let's change this to the last 24 hours. And it'll do yesterday and today. Uh, under web audit, still under IT number one, business and economy, search engines, analytics, ads, dynamics. Let's go to Facebook right here. So here's Facebook. I can click filter and I can see who's been on Facebook. Brian Picard, number one. Bill DeLaurent is number two. But probably not that much, honestly. Um, but you can see that they've been the, the top users of it. So that is Firewatch, a dynamic view. You can sort and filter by a time frame. You can uh, zoom in. You can look at domains, all the things that you'd expect you can look at. It's all here. Um, very nice tool. Next, policy map. Policy map is a graphical view of all the policies you've got enabled in your firewall. And it shows them from the interface to the policy, disposition, and the outbound interface. So here we can look at unhandled external packets. What happens on this or our other pipe? They get denied. I can look at this VLAN for content out for HTTPS. You know, it, it's allowed. So that's the policy map. I personally haven't had a lot of use for this, although it looks very pretty. Um, I have had some people tell me it helps them have a better understanding of all the policies they got in place and how they're being used. So those are the dashboards. Let's go to web. Um, one of the things that people ask a lot is who's doing the most stuff on the internet, who's using the most data, who's consuming the most traffic, and so on. This is most active clients. Remember, again, we've got our filter at the top, 
based on our clock time. I'm going to leave it set to 24 hours. Um, and up here we can do clients by bandwidth or by hits. I'm going to use bandwidth. That's the most <clears throat> appropriate way to do it. And I can see them all here graphically. And then here at the bottom, I can see it by username or if it's an unauthenticated device like an iPhone, it'll show none. Most popular domains, right? Um, I can go into a full web audit. That's by category, again, like we saw before in uh, uh, the Firewatch. And I can also look at a web activity trend. Uh, as you'd imagine, off hours, not a lot of web activity. This is when the day started. This is kind of when the day ended. Again, click to zoom, right? End of day. We can see in gray the hits, in purple the downloads, and then in kind of in teal the uploads. Very limited upload at uh, mostly download. Hover here, and I can see we had uh, a lot. It was 17.21 uh, meg downloaded at that time. So that's your web activity trend. You can keep zooming and double click to zoom out. Under traffic, I can look at my packet filters, my proxies, and my top clients. One thing I want to emphasize is look how fast it is to jump between these screens. Super quick. Very, very easy. Another thing, uh, at the top of every screen, again, the time, but also typically you'll have uh, uh, some other filter criteria. It picks the most popular one and puts that up first. In this case, the activity trend is the most important for proxy, but you can also look at source, destination, protocol, or session. So let's say I want to do proxy traffic by source. I click it, it updates it, and now I can see it by source. So let me see if I can find mine down here. That's me, 10.0.10.72, right? So in 24 hours, I've had uh, 16.7 thousand hits and 505 megs of traffic. Number one, 10.240.45. That's the Roku right? But I can see all those by traffic, by hits, by destination, so on. Clients, again, as we know, it's all right there by client name, uh, Jacob Burton, this unknown is a Roku, um, Michael Fowler, Bill, Mike, Steve, and I'm not the top. So here I am with uh, 93 megs sent, 397 megs downloaded, uh, and then 0.84 percentage of the total stream of our traffic is me. 64% is the Roku streaming video in the break room. I could also do it by host instead of by user. And I can filter it just on sent or just on received. If I go to received, I can do bandwidth or hits by host. Now I can see again, number one, that Roku. Let's go back to users for a second. I can also click on a PDF of this and instantly download a report, which I can then provide to an executive or whomever. Look how fast all this is. I click that PDF link, and, and I mean, what was that, a, a second or two? Super fast. Nice report. You can print it out, give it to somebody, send it to them in an email. Uh, very easy to use. And that functionality is across the board on most of these tools, even with the dashboards and the executive dashboard which I showed you earlier, which is filtered by time, like last 24 hours. Again, again, I can just click on the PDF, generate the PDF. Look how fast this is, 16-page executive summary report just like that. So if you ever get a request from somebody to provide data on what's going on, you can look at these reports, send them to them, email, and it's super, super quick. So let's minimize those and let's get down to a couple other things I want to show you. Um, uh, services. So services, we showed earlier in the kind of run up, services are things we're using to uh, improve our security. Things like uh, uh, application, blocked application, blocked websites via web blocker, uh, IPS as a service, reputation enabled defense, and finally botnet detection. So you saw earlier in our dashboard where we had a, uh, a huge uh, peak in botnets and like what's going on with that. 
Now I can see graphically over time, over the last 24 hours, from 10.35 a.m. yesterday to 10.35 a.m. today, and I can look at scans, blocks, and so on. This purple is blocks. I can zoom in on that, right? Now I can see we had 263 of these botnet sources blocked at uh, 9.40 a.m. I click on a PDF of this. Again, super quick. Look how fast this is. I produce a graphical report, email it to somebody in a, in a second. I mean, it's so quick. Very nice. Um, we can also, instead of using activity trend, we can do it by client. Now, no data in the last 24 hours, so we haven't had any on clients. By sites or by destination. So all that's available to you. You can report on all of it live. Very easy to use. If you want to go to block websites. Now, I did tell our guys yesterday, and they got a kind of a dark sense of humor. I did tell them yesterday we were going to be doing this, and I wanted to throw some stuff at it. So some of the stuff in here is just that these guys have a dark sense of humor, and they went after a couple of things. Gambling, malicious websites intentionally, some newly registered websites intentionally. We even had some guys uh, type in some uh, uh, adult content searches to try to block those things. So we'd have some traffic in here. Truthfully, it's usually a lot cleaner than this. We want to throw some stuff at it so you'd see what it kind of looks like. So by category, by trend, so you can see if it's increasing or declining. <clears throat> and since this is a 24-hour period, you notice in the middle here, which is overnight, almost nothing. So this is 6 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. It's very, very quiet. Then it kind of peaks again in the morning. So this is yesterday evening. Click and zoom. I can go back to, let's say, around 1 p.m., and I can just look at yesterday's afternoon from from about uh, 119 all the way to 6 p.m. and see the peak of denied requests was at uh, 4.30 p.m. Double-click and reset. As always, remember, these things can be uh, run to a PDF. It's super fast. Now I can print this out. Uh, or email it to somebody. So that's that's great. Devices. On uh, devices, we've got all uh, denied packets, blocked default threats, authentication, and audit trail, alarms, and policy usage. I do want to show this blocked default threats. This is you know, your firewall in action, knowing that it's working. Block sites, uh, block ports, and IP scan. I can change this to, let's go to a custom and make it three days. Save, update the data, look how fast that is. Super quick. Change it back to 24 hours. Again, super fast. Denied packets, easily uh, found there. Alarms. <clears throat> uh, what alarms are, are firewall events. In this case, multi-WAN event. What happened is we have got multi-WAN enabled. We have multiple internet pipes for redundancy. We also kind of segregate some of our uh, traffic into a separate pipe to have better performance for external uh, screen sharing. So when we connect to you guys for remote support, we want that to be lickety split really quick. So we put that screen sharing on its own port, not with our web traffic, not with the Roku, so it's always fast. But uh, we had a multi-WAN event because one of our internet pipes was down. There was a maintenance event with Cox as our uh, backup pipe. If I go back to 24 hours, uh, still two. Go to seven days, this could take a minute, 16 events. So I know we had 16 uh, issues of multi-WAN events. Now, that's not unusual. Um, as you know, with these cable providers, they're frequently taking these pipes offline at weird hours to do maintenance. And the other pipe we use is the Ocala Electric Fiber Optic Internet. Uh, we have a gig from them. And they'll also have sometimes outage windows for upgrades and so on, you know, 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. kind of thing. So that's where you'll see that. Changes back to today. Go to policy usage. I can see all my policies, um, bytes, hits, et cetera. I can print this out, share it with somebody if I want. Uh, great way to see which one of your policies are kind of being used. This is an interesting one. We use a Mitel, a telephone system. We have an edge gateway, which allows us to use remote phones. I can see 
you know, last usage occurred before 1517 UTC. Of course, the big the big money is here on HTTPS outbound. Uh, if you're not yet doing HTTPS content inspection, I urge you to implement it immediately. Because as we all know, you know what 90% of internet traffic now is HTTPS. Even LinkedIn, Google, it's all HTTPS. So if you're not doing HTTPS, you really need to because that is definitely the largest part of traffic. And not inspecting that is a major problem. So please look into it if you're not doing it. Next is inbound ConnectWise control. Now, this is what we use for remote control sessions to access you guys securely. So our number one, internet out. Number two, ConnectWise control relay. Uh, number three, HTTPS content inspection. Then our patching and management system, and then the kind of the any rules. So nice to see that stuff stack ranked. Detail reports. There's a lot in here. I'm going to leave it on today for now, but this is the multi-WAN report. So earlier I talked to you about a multi-WAN. It says external interface, OEU is now up. This said external interface, COX is now up. So it had gone down at 3 a.m. and come back up kind of a minute later. Let me drop this down to a custom and change it to three days. Look how quick that updates. Isn't that awesome? And if I hover here, it gives me the details. Link up, up, up. So it went down and it came right back up again. So it's showing us all those times. Here's a down event. The Cox link went down at uh, on 127 at 8:59 a.m. Then it was back up again a second later. So it was super quick. So very nice to have that detail report. Again, you can always uh, export that. In this case, a CSV. Denied packets. You can see packet denies. I did it over three days. So it's going to take a second to run because there's going to be a lot of it. As you know, with <clears throat> denials, we're always denying stuff at, at the firewall. That's what its job is. This one happens to have 16,089 pages of data. And we saw how quick that generated. Go back to just today, super quick, 1,740 pages of data or at 100 rows, 435 pages of data. And that was just like a finger snap. It was instant. So that's the power of using this stuff in the AWS cloud. Look how quick all that is. It's amazing. Application usage, web audit, all of these super quick. And you can see any of them kind of instantly. You can export them to a CSV. I'll do this one right now just to kind of show you that. It's neat. When I export it to a CSV, it does it as a zip to minimize the size, but I can pull it up in Microsoft Excel and I can do a, um, if you guys are Excel users or gurus, you know how to do all this stuff. <clears throat> I can now do a sort and filter and I can search for whatever I want. So let's say I want to look for degulling. I check off everybody. I just choose me. I hit OK and here's all mine. And I can see every single thing by time, by date, and again, I can change categories. Let's say I want to go look at that LinkedIn. What was he doing on LinkedIn? I can see every LinkedIn hit, where it went, and what it saw. Tell me that's not cool. Super easy to do. I don't use Facebook a lot. I only really use it for business, so this should be pretty small, and it is, but I do go there sometimes, and we post ads, and we post, you know, we're doing these webinars. That's on Facebook. Um, like maybe I look at uh, Twitter. Again, not a lot, but I use it a little bit. Here's my Twitter. That's probably like uh, two tweets. It's very, very busy traffic. So super easy to do all that stuff, very fast and very informative. Blocked websites. Um, again, this is uh, exportable. We can change this to 100 rows. You see it's just a single page. Most of them were parked domains. and she was going to this data dash platform dot square cloud services dot com, 27 hits. So as a security researcher, I might say, okay, let's go to over Tangerine's PC and take a look, see, maybe there's uh, uh, some adware or some pop-up on a site she visits that's trying to send her somewhere it's not supposed to. Um, 
she's uh, never really off topic. She's a very busy worker, but maybe something back in the background to take a look at. Potentially unwanted software. These are places that you know uh, are trying to maybe do drive-by downloads on us or suspicious content. So Jenna Taylor, this IPList.cc, suspicious content was blocked. The intrusion prevention service. You can see what intrusion preventions were denied. Let's change it to 24 hours, get a little more data. Uh, we've got how many of these events? Less than 100. And I can see all of them. Again, exportable. I just hit CSV download, open this thing up, pull it up in Excel, super fast, easy to use. Uh, this is me geeking out on Excel because I kind of like doing that, but I use this sort and filter all the time, and now I can do it by source IP or destination. Let's just uncheck all of them and go to, um, let's go to Bill, William De Laurentiis, and just see his. Or I can go to maybe anybody that's an identified employee and not the uh, uh, IoT type devices, and now I can see them. Very easy to do. Look at signature category. You'll see that we had uh, 15 of them were potential DOS or DDoS, uh, potential denial of services that were blocked. So very, very easy to uh, use. You can dump to Excel, report on it, send it to your buddy. Botnet detection, blocked applications, all here for you. So let me pause for one second. And I'm going to show you something that cloud has that on-site does not have. This is net new feature, net new functionality, really cool. It's a search engine search. When a user in the network goes to Google, Bing, etc., they type in a search, it's going to show it in here. So today what I can see is Brittany searched for FLGISA and FLGISA logo. So we're presenting at FLGISA, which is the <clears throat> Florida Local Government Information System Association. So she went to that website to find the logo to put it in something. Uh, CIDR cheat sheet. That's a telephone thing. We're looking for content data. Private Internet Access Proxy. PIA SOX Proxy. And Duck and Go. So all those things are searches from today. Kind of neat. Compliance. Some of us are in industries that require compliance, HIPAA or PCI. I know a lot of you aren't in HIPAA, but I do want to share this with you because <clears throat> the HIPAA compliance uh, real-time data is also useful just for logging administrative activity. Even if you're not HIPAA compliant, you might want to look at this. So I can do an audit trail, and I can look at alarms, and I can filter it over a period of time. So I'm going to change it to 24 hours, and I can look at all my denied authentications. I can report, I can drop this in a report, and now I have evidence to support that I'm running my compliance reporting and I'm looking at an audit trail every day. And I'm seeing what events and actions are there. Of course, you can run all these on a schedule basis. I'll get in that in a second and send them to you every day or week. <clears throat> Same goes for PCI. Um, I can change this to, uh, let me do a three day period here, go back to Monday. Might take a second to load. Zero day malware, there wasn't any. Uh, let's go to malicious activity, there was none. Recipient destination, none. Threat level indicators, none. Advanced malware, none. Uh, gateway antivirus, kind of none. Signature based blockage, there was some, right? Or audit trail. All this again at the top, PDF. Super quick, I've got the report right there at my fingertips. I've got a nine-pager PCI compliance report for the week. So far, I can send it to whoever I want, drop it in an inbox, send it to a compliance officer or an external auditor. System health, uh, this is basically a, a interface summary, letting you see overall what's going on with your network in terms of either by bytes or by rate. So I can look at my Cox pipe, I can change it to my OEU pipe as well, which is my uh, second internet connection. But I can click and zoom here, and we'll see sent traffic, received traffic. I can hover, and this is all in 
uh, megabytes. So sent, you know, 28 meg was kind of our peak right there. 29.6 meg was our peak on Cox. Go to OEU. Let's zoom in on this one. Our peak here, 89.7 meg at noon on the 27th was our peak. That's a lot of being, that's a lot of scent. We were probably doing a large attachment. So you can do it by interface. You can also do it by zone. You can click to zoom there as well. Very easy to do. Double click to zoom out. If you want to run a report on that uh, as a PDF, interface by health, then hey, show it to a boss. This is an interesting way to look at this data in this respect. If there's an outage and a pipe is down, you're now able to show that outage graphically and see the start and stop time of the outage. Now, this is a 90 page report. Look how fast this ran for this interface summary. I'm gonna scroll through it just kind of quickly, but you can see the traffic on that interface uh, by hour over the last four days. And it's showing you gigs per hour over that interface. So a lot of data here. You probably would not use this in an everyday scenario, but if you had an outage event and you wanted to track when it started and when it stopped, you could easily do that by saying, hey, we were getting zero bytes at this time. So something that's useful at times to give to your carrier. Another one, SD-WAN reporting. As you know, WatchGuard implemented SD-WAN reporting recently. It lets us track um, loss, latency, jitter, and delay per pipe. So I can look at my COX and my uh, uh, OEU pipe. You'll see here on latency, we're usually around, uh, I mean, really super low, frankly, on both of them. Uh, the OEU pipe and the COX pipe, both very, very good. I can also look at uh, packet loss and jitter on each pipe. You can see on the Cox pipe, the jitter is quite a bit higher. I can click to zoom in and see here what it looks like. The same on packet loss and click to zoom in or zoom out. And I can compare those two pipes. Of course, just like all of them, you can dump this to a PDF and give it to somebody and let them know, hey, this is what our internet uh, usage looks like in terms of latency, jitter, delay. I got a three-page report there just in a, in a finger snap. Last couple things I'm going to show you, per-client reporting, uh, degoing at vertex.local. That's me. Click update. Here's my per-client reporting showing web activity trend, domains, IPs, and so on. Remember, this is all filtered based on my date range. I've got that for this week. I could just do it for today if I want, and that'll show you for today. And this is rolling from when I started to now, uh, which is, uh, you know, 1054. So we're almost out of time. I do want to show a couple more things. I want to jump into uh, the log manager. Log manager is kind of like the traffic dashboard inside uh, your traditional tool. And so it's up to date to the second. It's always going to show you what's going on. You can see denies. You can see everything. As you see, it's, it's, uh, with 100 rows per page, it's 7,000 pages just for today. So very verbose, but you can click on these. It gives you all the details. I'll come down here to uh, proxy match for Jenna. It tells me content inspection, HTTPS. Here is a proxy that was used. Typically, what you're looking for is denies in here. Somebody says, hey, I can't get to a website or it's being blocked. You know, you could pull this up say, okay, go ahead and try it again, and it'll show right there in your log, and you can find out why it's being denied, what the reason of it is. Just by clicking on that, it'll give you all the details. So super fast. Another thing you can do, you can search the log. In this case, you can do an IP search. And now it shows me, for today, all the traffic logs for that IP address, and you can really zero in to troubleshooting exactly what's going on for a specific IP address. Very powerful. It changes to 100 rows. Again, look how quick all this is. Uh, us long-termers, if you've been using the old-fashioned tools, you know the, the pain of the slowness of it sometimes. This is just super, super fast, you know, clicking and scrolling through all this. In addition to traffic logs, you can also look at alarm and event logs 
and statistical logs. So look at alarms, nothing, thank goodness. Events, nothing. Statistical logs for the today, nothing. And then kind of all combined. So for this one IP address, uh, 8,200 uh, rows of data, but you can see them all in detail, right? Outbound internet was the proxy that was used. It went over the Cox interface and so on. So very nice uh, tool there. Lastly, I'm gonna get into scheduled reports because this is something that a lot of people have asked for, scheduled reports. I'm gonna create a new one and let you see what it looks like. I hit the plus symbol here. I'm gonna call this one a uh, you know webinar test report. <clears throat> test data. Hit next. Now it lets me choose what fireboxes I want to report on. This is showing the value of a distributed enterprise report. So if you've got 15, 20, 30 firewalls, you can run this one report across the entire infrastructure, or you can choose off a single location. In this case, it's just our core, so we really only have the stacked, <clears throat> the stacked firewalls. So I'm going to run it off those. Now, what reports do I want to run? I can select all, I can clear all, or I can check the individual ones that I like. So let's say, for example, I want to look at um, every day, I want to look at an SD-WAN report. Click next, tells me the frequency, daily, weekly, monthly, or now, and then start time, and then what zone, um, Obviously, we're in the uh, East Coast, so Eastern Time, and what language to put it in. Now, this one, I'm just going to do a run now so you can see it real quick. Click Next. Add myself as a recipient. It'll drop me in as an email. Click Next. Save Report. Just that quick, the report is there. It's already in my email, probably. But I can click on that webinar test report, right? And when it's done, I can download it right from there as well. So give it one minute, and I can download it right from there. <clears throat> Go back to some weeklies. I do run these weeklies. You can see my weekly reports are here. I'll go ahead and download one of those while I'm waiting. These are my weekly reports. I open them up. All these are here for me. So I've got an APT summary report, my default threats, botnets, DLP, executive summary, antivirus and so on so let me go back to web blocker for a, this is a weekly web blocker report pull this up and this shows me on my firewall from 112 to 118 all day every day what block websites we had it's a beautiful pdf this one happens to be 10 pages long i can share it with whoever we like uh, park domains, unwanted software, elevated exposure, and so on. All right there. Now, you do see some of these, sex gambling and so on, and I did tell you these guys are out there checking that stuff all the time. Um, that's legit because we want to make sure this stuff's working. So, But you can see it by uh, every category. This is great to share with executives who want to kind of maybe dip their toe in the water and know what's going on, but they really don't want to know. They just want to see a report. It's good for that. Uh, also botnet summary report for the week drag this over here's my botnet summary for the week i can tell my firewall is working it's blocking botnets very easy so those weekly show up there let me go back in here for a second and go back to my schedule reports go to my webinar test and now you'll see here it is for download i click on this this is the one we just ran the run now and here's my sd wan report right there for me. Now, as you all know, that's a schedule report. I can run it every day, send it to myself, run it once a week, send it to myself. Of course, I can also always go down to um, my fireware or firewall and go down to my health, click on SD-WAN, click on, uh, um, let's see, status, choose last seven days, and I can just report it like that too, if I want to do it on demand on the fly. Otherwise, I can schedule it for myself, drop it in my inbox, forward it to my team, or do whatever I want with it. It's all super, super fast. So that's a mile high overview. I know we went through a lot of information very rapidly. Um, I wanted to show you the benefits and the value and the capabilities in WatchGuard Cloud. 
And just to reemphasize kind of the most important things to remember with WatchGuard Cloud, it's free, it's included. You can use it in addition to your on-site. It doesn't replace it. Um, setup of WatchGuard Cloud is something we can do for you or you can do yourself. It's pretty easy. It's a, you know, all the mouse clicks and all the kind of key codes for security you got to do. I'd say it's about 15 to 20 minutes if you've done it once before. First time you do it, never having done it, it might take you a half an hour or a bit longer. One of our guys would be glad to do it for you. They could probably do it in, you know, 15, 20 minutes and get it up and running. So thank you all for joining us today. I am going to stay on the line. Um, we're going to continue to monitor chat and questions. Be glad to continue to answer those for you. This was recorded. We're going to post it on our YouTube channel ASAP. We're going to send out the link to everybody that was on the call and uh, those that registered but couldn't attend. And we are going to have another one of these uh, uh, educational webinars again in about a month and be glad to have you all join us on that. We'll send you those uh, dates and times very shortly. So thanks again for joining us. I hope you have a great day and um, we'll see you soon. <laughs>